Well, hey guys, in today's video, we're gonna be talking about five alternatives to hydroquinone for melasma. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Andrea. I'm a board certified dermatologist. I have a lot of videos about different skin conditions, skincare products, hyperpigmentation, melasma. Consider subscribing if that is of interest to you, or you can follow me over on Instagram or TikTok. I post on those platforms a lot too. What is melasma? Melasma is a chronic skin condition of hyperpigmentation where you have brownish patches. These patches have very angulated borders. It can be triggered by pregnancy hormones, birth control pills. It also is notoriously triggered by sun exposure, both ultraviolet radiation and visible light from the sun. First and foremost, you have to know there is no cure for melasma. It is something that you are going to have to manage Indefinitely, yes, there are many great treatments that can get it to almost near clear, but with time, it almost always comes back, especially when you have sun exposure. The other thing you have to understand about melasma is there is no single one best treatment. It's not a one and done thing. Multiple treatment modalities are employed together or in tandem to get you the best results. When it comes to treating melasma, the gold standard remains hydroquinone. It has its limitations as you probably know, but if you're not aware, hydroquinone cannot be used every single day indefinitely. The reason you can't use hydroquinone indefinitely is there are side effects that you can start to encounter with long-term use. Hydroquinone is available by prescription in strengths of 4% and up. Your doctor likely will tell you to limit use to anywhere from 16 weeks to six months. It's well known for being irritating. And as a side note, anything that causes your skin irritation actually can worsen the melasma and hyperpigmentation. That's why it's so important to follow up with your dermatologist if you are using hydroquinone to monitor for this side effect. Topical hydroquinone used long-term, especially in high percentages, can rarely cause a skin condition called pseudoochronosis, which consists of these black little speckles of pigmentation. It's very disfiguring. Hydroquinone also can cause abnormal pigmentation of the surrounding skin, and it can cause a rebound worsening of the hyperpigmentation if used long-term without a break. You can't use hydroquinone with benzoyl peroxide, so if you've got either melasma or hyperpigmentation related to acne, you can't use those two ingredients together. It's not safe in pregnancy. With long-term use, it can lead to nail discoloration. Because of these limitations of hydroquinone, there are treatments for those who either don't respond to hydroquinone or for use during the drug holiday where you take a break for a couple of months from a hydroquinone. All right, the first one I have talked about in a lot of videos, but it definitely bears mention here, and that is azelaic acid. Azelaic acid, 20%, applied twice daily, can be as effective as hydroquinone. Unlike hydroquinone, it's safe to use in pregnancy. Unlike hydroquinone, it doesn't cause any abnormal pigmentation of the surrounding skin, so you can use it to the entire face. It also affords the benefit of treating acne and treating rosacea. So if you have those conditions, this medication is a treatment for those. Azelaic acid works not only by inhibiting that enzyme tyrosinase, but it also impacts the enzymes in the mitochondria, the powerhouse of the cell. For these reasons, it impacts those abnormal melanocytes and limits their proliferation. If you weren't aware, azelaic acid is already naturally present on your skin. It is a byproduct of that little yeast that lives on our skin, malassezia. In creams, it can help address hyperpigmentation, acne, and rosacea. Azelaic acid 20% is by prescription only, at least here in the US. Now here in the US, you can buy azelaic acid over the counter in much weaker strengths. Unfortunately, those alternatives have not been investigated in terms of efficacy for, well, anything really, but especially melasma. So I would say the one 
to have the most confidence in is going to be the prescription azelaic acid. That's not to say that those over-the-counter forms are not gonna be helpful, I just don't know to what extent because they have not been studied. Azelaic acid is anti-inflammatory too, so you know that can help just kind of calm down background redness, irritation that you may have. So it's a good ingredient for those of you dealing with melasma for that reason because again, anything that causes irritation, it can worsen melasma as well as other types of hyperpigmentation you may be dealing with, whether that be healing acne that heals with a dark mark, maybe you had ingrown hairs related to shaving that are healing with discoloration, Ac azelaic acid can help with those issues. All right, number two is something I don't think I have ever talked about, and that is methimazole. What the heck is that? It's actually a medication used to treat hyperthyroid. It's an antithyroid medication that for thyroid disease is given as a pill by mouth. But your dermatologist can have that pill crushed up and compounded into a cream which can be very effective for treating melasma. The skin lightening effects of this treatment were actually first discovered in the early 2000s in guinea pigs. It works by inhibiting peroxidase enzymes in the cells that make pigment, the melanocytes, as well as interfering with the intermediates to pigment synthesis. There's also evidence that it inhibits redness triggered by exposure to the sun. Now, if you recall from my video on things that make melasma worse. Melasma triggers you need to avoid. One of them is heat and sunlight because not only do they lead to upregulation of pigment, but in melasma specifically, they impact the blood vessels in the skin. And those blood vessels play a major role in melasma in terms of bringing factors in that kind of feed hyperpigmentation. So methimazole may address that as well. Unlike hydroquinone, it is not toxic to the surrounding healthy melanocytes, so you don't have to worry about rebound, worsening hyperpigmentation. You don't have to worry about pseudo-ochronosis. It's actually pretty inexpensive. Now, this is not something you can just walk into the drugstore and buy. Your dermatologist has to write a prescription for it. You may be wondering, well, isn't that gonna mess up my thyroid hormone? It, it actually doesn't because the compound is so large, it is not absorbed systemically to any appreciable effect and it has been shown to not impact thyroid hormone levels, including your thyroid stimulating hormone or your free T3 or T4. So it is safe in that regard. It has no impact on your actual thyroid hormone or thyroid function at all. It's actually pretty inexpensive as well. Prescription medications, unfortunately, here in the US are incredibly expensive. Now, as a side note, I do have a video on how to get the best price on your prescription medications using GoodRx. So I'm going to link that down below in the description box, definitely check it out. Number three is one I've talked about before, but definitely bears mentioning here as an alternative to hydroquinone or an adjuvant to hydroquinone, really well researched for melasma, and that is oral tranexamic acid. Now, tranexamic acid is a medication used to stop bleeding, but when prescribed at lower doses, it's actually very effective for treating melasma. It controls pigmentation by inhibiting the release of inflammatory mediators that kind of feed pigment production. These include prostaglandins and arachidonic acid. It's given as a pill 325 milligrams twice a day, and it actually works relatively quickly to improve the melasma. You can see improvement in about three months, and it's not something that you necessarily have to be taking for the rest of your life, even though this is a condition that is chronic and will come and go and flare with like sun exposure or hormones. Do you know that this particular treatment, you will see benefit and then you don't have to keep taking it in order to maintain that benefit. There's no rebound worsening of your melasma. Now your melasma, again, may recur later on down the line. You can take the medication again if it's indicated, if it's safe to do so, you can take the medication again in the future, but you don't have to keep taking it necessarily to maintain the results that you get with it. Now I mentioned that this medication is primarily used to stop bleeding. So you can't be on this. If you have blood clotting issues, if you're on anticoagulant medicines, you can't take the, you can't be on it if you're on those. If you are pregnant, you can't use this. 
If you have any problems with your kidneys, your lungs, your heart, this would not be indicated. A lot, you know, a lot of those issues make you more prone to blood clots. Likewise, if you smoke, <gasps> this is a no-go. Smokers do have an increased risk for performing blood clots. I mean, being, being a smoker actually makes your blood very thick and sticky and prone to clots. That's why smokers develop strokes. So this would not be safe to take. What about putting it on the skin? Apply it topically. There is some research to show that topical, meaning in a cream, tranexamic acid may help to improve melasma, but more research is needed. Some of the research suggests that applying tranexamic acid to the skin can actually help address the redness and possibly that blood vessel component that I mentioned earlier. So it's certainly worthwhile to try as an alternative to hydroquinone. There are two studies that come to mind that use topical tranexamic acid. One uses 5% and the other uses 3%. Now you can go into the, like Sephora and find skin lightening products that have tranexamic acid. Faded Topicals, for example, is one that I've reviewed on here before that has tranexamic acid as well as other skin lightening ingredients like I think it has licorice root, kojic acid, a few others. Uh, so, you know, that's certainly an option to, to try out, relatively safe. Again, if it causes your skin irritation, then it's not something that you want to continue using. It's promising as an alternative to hydroquinone, especially during the, the drug holiday, or as an alternative to the pill form of tranexamic acid, which we do have good research to support use. And you know that is a go-to for a lot of people in their treatment armamentarium of melasma. Here's an emerging treatment I had actually never heard about. I learned about it this weekend. And that is Rumex Occidentalis or Western Dock. This is a botanical ingredient, not super rigorously evidence-based for improving melasma, but there is some research to suggest it may be as effective as hydroquinone, although more research is needed. How does this work? Again, like many other ingredients that we've talked about, it inhibits that enzyme tyrosinase, with, which is what is in those cells melanocytes that ends up being responsible for pigment production. And it also may block how those little pigment producing factories in the melanocyte kind of get transferred around the melanosomes. So possibly two potential mechanisms of action. When applied twice daily at 3% strength, for people with melasma, it was shown to be as effective as hydroquinone. So it may be, you know, an alternative, a suitable alternative. Side effects are mild. Some people endorse mild peeling of the skin with this ingredient, but it doesn't appear to cause any rebound worsening hyperpigmentation. As far as we know, it is a safe ingredient to use, but there are no studies in pregnancy or breastfeeding to say if that's safe. It's a botanic extract. You can find it in some skincare products. I discovered that it is present in and the Grown Alchemist Brightening Serum. Now, I have never used this product. I just, in preparation for filming this video, I went online to try and see if I could find products that had this in it. $79 for 0.84 ounces. Now this particular serum from Grown Alchemist, again, I've never used it, but it does have some other ingredients that have been shown to be helpful for hyperpigmentation and redness like licorice root. I will point out it does have rose water, which can have fragrance compounds that can be irritating. So just be aware of that. But that's the only one that I could come across. Uh, but it is an evidence-based ingredient for melasma as an alternative possibly to hydroquinone. And then last but not least is Cystamine Cream, sold under the brand name of Cispera. You can actually buy it from Milk and Honey, which is a salon chain. What the heck is cystamine? Your body actually produces this naturally from the amino acid cysteine. It has a radio protective effect, meaning it helps protect your cells in your body from ionizing radiation. And within your cells, it can help increase an antioxidant called glutathione, which is really helpful for warding off oxidative stress upon exposure to environmental stressors, many of which aggravate melasma. Heat, ultraviolet radiation, visible light. Cystamine is effective not only for those looking for a hydroquinone drug holiday to take their break from hydroquinone, they need to stop using it. But some people simply do not respond well to hydroquinone. This is an alternative that many people actually do get results 
from, just in terms of improving the, at least the melasma located in the epidermis. Again, to remind you guys, there are two locations where you can have your melasma. It can be in the epidermis, but it also can be in the dermis, the deeper layers. Believe it or not, there are no studies actually comparing uh, cystamine to hydroquinone. So I can't tell you how effective it is in comparison to hydroquinone, but it certainly does help the melasma out and seems to be an alternative for people who just don't respond to hydroquinone or for people looking for a break from it. Now it can be pretty irritating. And interestingly enough, the irritation that people get with it, it's kind of delayed onset. And one way around that, which you'll notice on the instructions if you take it, is to put it on and let it sit on the skin for a while and then it tells you to rinse it off. It seems as though it gets into the skin relatively efficiently and quickly to exert its effects uh, for melasma. So you don't necessarily have to have a prolonged contact with it, just that short contact therapy can be effective while minimizing the dryness and irritation, which again, for melasma is key. Anything that makes the skin, ir you know, causes irritation for you can definitely aggravate that. Irritating skincare products, doing too many exfoliating products can actually really worsen, worsen the melasma out a lot. All right, y'all, so those are five alternatives to hydroquinone. Hydroquinone though, you know, it still has a key role in the treatment of melasma. It gets an unfair and bad rap. Yes, there is a potential side effect of not only irritation, but pseudoochronosis and rebound worsening hyperpigmentation. But when executed under the supervision of your dermatologist, it is very effective uh, topical. Now, there's a lot of fear mongering out there on the internet about hydroquinone and cancer. And I have videos debunking this, but as a reminder, you know, that's kind of misrepresenting animal studies where they put a boatload of hydroquinone into an animal and it got a tumor. That doesn't reflect the reality of putting it on human skin. There's no evidence of any cancer in humans with using hydroquinone, but you do need to take a break from it. And here in come these alternatives. If you've got melasma though, to reiterate, it's something that you have to stay on top of from here on out, more or less. It's not a one and done thing. It always can come back. You've gotta be really conservative with how you treat your skin. You can't be going out in the sun without sun protection. Even sunscreen, while necessary and essential for anything to work for melasma, don't just rely on sunscreen. You will, it will backfire because certain wavelengths of radiation from the sun, they're not always necessarily addressed as well by just sunscreen. And you want to make sure that you are protecting your skin using other measures like a hat, an umbrella. And remember the UV rays that come through window glass can aggravate this condition too. So if you sit by a window, make sure you're wearing sunscreen as well and protect your skin from heat exposure, irritating products. In the description box, I'm going to link my video on melasma mistakes to avoid. So definitely check that one out. I hope this video was informative to you guys and you enjoyed it. If you like this one, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.